Never start your Linux journey by installing Gentoo. Seriously, don't. Unless you enjoy endless waiting and questioning your life choices, then by all means go crazy. You've heard of Linux distributions, right? Ubuntu, Fedora, Mint, easy peasy, ready to use in minutes. Then there's Gentoo. It's like the extreme sport of operating systems. It's not just an install, it's a compile everything from scratch marathon. Imagine baking a cake, but you have to grow the wheat, milk the cow, and mine the sugar yourself before you even start mixing. So, why would anyone willingly put themselves through this gentry torture? It's a question that keeps many Linux users up at night. Is it pure madness, or is there a hidden method to this madness? Today, we're diving deep into the world of Gentry Linux. We'll explore the painful installation process, the benefits that some claim, and why it's probably not for you. You might just understand why a small, dedicated group swears by it. The first thing you hear about Gentry is compiling, and not just a few small programs, we're talking about almost everything. Your web browser, your desktop environment, even your very basic system tools are built right from the source code. This means your computer is doing a lot of heavy lifting for a very, very long time. Picture this, you start compiling your web browser, Chromium. You click start and then you wait for hours, maybe even a full day depending on your computer's power. Your computer fan screams, your room heats up, and you wonder if you made a terrible mistake. Many new users are tricked into thinking this is a fast process. They see it optimized and tailored and get excited. What they don't realize is that tailored means you're the tailor, and you're sewing every single stitch by hand. So, what's supposedly the big advantage of all this compiling? Proponents will tell you it's performance. Because everything is built specifically for your hardware, it should run faster, right? They say it's like a custom-built race car versus a mass-produced sedan. In theory, yes. In reality, the performance boost is off often so tiny, you'd need special tools to even measure it. For everyday tasks like browsing the internet or watching videos, you'd be hard pressed to notice the difference. Your eyes simply aren't fast enough to see those nanoseconds of improvement. Another supposed benefit is control. With Jintu, you control every single little detail. Want to use a specific version of a library? You got it. Want to tweak an obscure setting in a rarely used program? Gentoo lets you. This level of control is amazing for developers, system administrators, or anyone who enjoys tinkering beyond reason. But for the average person, it's like being handed the keys to a space shuttle when you just want to drive to the grocery store. Most people don't need or want that much power. Then there's the learning experience. Gentoo forces you to learn a lot about how Linux works under the hood. You'll understand dependencies, kernel configurations, and assistance like never before. It's true, you'll learn a ton, mostly from debugging errors. The problem is, this learning often comes at the cost of your sanity. You'll spend hours searching forums for cryptic error messages. You'll probably break your system more times than you can count. It's like learning to swim by being thrown into the deep end, blindfolded. Many Gentoo users will brag about their command line prowess. They'll tell you how much superior it is to graphical interfaces. They'll scoff at anyone who uses a mouse. This isn't about being better, it's often about showing off. The Gentoo community is famous for its elitism. If you ask a basic question, you might get told to RTFM read the Asterisk, asterisk, asterisk manual. It's an unwritten rule that if you're not suffering like them, you're not genuinely part of the club. So, when should you even consider Gentoo? Only if you have an all, very specific piece of hardware that you want to revive. Only if you're building a highly specialized server with very particular needs. Or, only if you truly enjoy the process of spending days building software from scratch. For minimal gain, if you're looking for a daily driver, something you can use to browse the web, check emails and watch videos without a headache, stay far, far away from Gentoo. There are dozens of other fantastic Linux distributions that offer a smooth, easy experience. Ubuntu, Linux Mint, Pop. Or else they're all there, waiting for you to simply install and enjoy. The biggest downside? Time. Gentoo devours time like a hungry monster. Updates take forever because, you guessed it, more compiling. Every small patch means hours of your CPU grinding away, making your computer hotter than a summer sidewalk. Imagine going to update your system, and it tells you it'll take five hours. Five hours? Just for an update. You could watch an entire a movie trilogy in that time, or learn a new language, or even bake an actual cake. But no, you're stuck watching progress bars. A common joke among Linux users is I use Arch, by the way. But the true I use Gentoo person stands alone, in silent suffering. They've transcended mere Arch Linux challenges. They've seen the Abyss of Enters compilation and lived to tell the tale, or at least complain about it. Some say Gentoo is a rite of passage, a way to truly earn your Linux stripes. But is earning a painful, time-consuming process really worth it? It's like saying you truly earn your driver's license by building the car from scratch first. Mostly unnecessary and often just plain silly. The core appeal for some is the minimalism. Because you only compile what you need, 
your system can be incredibly lean. No unnecessary programs, no wasted space. This attracts a very niche crowd who believes less is always more, even if it means sacrificing convenience. This minimalist dream often crashes when you realize that even basic functionality requires a surprising amount of underlying components. You try to install a simple image viewer and suddenly Genji wants to pull in half the internet as dependencies. It's a rabbit hole of requirements. In conclusion, Genji Linux is not for the faint of heart or for anyone who values their time. It's a powerful and flexible system, yes, but its power comes at a significant cost in complexity and effort. It's a niche tool for very specific purposes, not a general purpose operating system for most people. If you're truly curious about it, mess around with it in a virtual machine. Don't put it on your main computer. Your future self will thank you and your computer fan will live longer quite a life. Choose an easy Linux distribution, save yourself the headache, and actually enjoy your computing experience. Life is too short for endless compiling. Do you dare to try Gentoo, or have you already lived through its charms? Let us know your horror stories in the comments below. If this video gave you a good laugh, or saved you from a terrible mistake, hit that like button. And for more content that demystifies the weird and wild world of technology, subscribe to the channel. Ready for another deep dive into a tech mystery? Check out this video dropping next.